The drama surrounding the Flash star, Ezra Miller, seems to have no end. In March of this year, Miller made big headlines with his assaultive behavior on a couple in Hawaii and his resulting arrest. Back then, Warner Brothers was already in big trouble, as the movie giant has a rigorous policy when it comes to such offenses. See Johnny Depp's role as Grindelwald in the Fantastic Beasts series. As has now become known, Miller has once again allowed himself to engage in a scandalous action. As reported by U.S. media, Miller was issued with two restraining orders against him within a very short period of time. In one case, it is about him having recently disappeared with the 18-year-old environmental activist Tokata Iron Eyes. What is particularly juicy is that he has known her since she was 12 years old and is alleged to have provided her with drugs in her teens. The parents had a restraining order against Miller from approaching the family. Police currently remain on the lookout for the two fugitives. Meanwhile, Miller mocked the police chase on his Instagram account, which has since been disabled. Even more interesting is the case of an anonymous mother from Massachusetts who has also filed an order against Miller. The case involves the woman's 12-year-old child who is said to have been showered with presents by Miller in a creepy fashion. This has now definitely gotten Warner into real trouble, and Deadline reports that Miller will no longer be part of future DC projects. Already in the wake of the events in Hawaii, many fans demanded the casting of Grant Gustin, who has already starred as The Flash in the series of the same name and has been much better received by fans. The only thing Warner is likely to lose with an instant dismissal of Ezra Miller would be an awful lot of money. However, that might still be less expensive than keeping up the hope of Miller not committing any more crimes. Either way, we are excited about what will happen next with The Flash. So far, the theatrical release is still scheduled for June 23rd, 2023. From June 13th to June 18th, the NC International Animation Film Festival took place again this year. The grand highlight was certainly an announcement by Paramount and Nickelodeon, as they announced the production of not one, but three new animated movies based on Avatar The Last Airbender. The mention was of a theatrical run, so after all these years, we can finally expect a big screen release. In terms of content, not much is known yet, but there should be a prequel about Kyoshi, a film about Prince Zuko, and another one about Avatar Korra. The latter is to be set at the end of the animated series The Legend of Korra, which aired on Nickelodeon from 2012 to 2014. However, this information should not be relied upon too much, since it is only a matter of rumors so far. Series creators Brian Konietzko and Michael Dante DiMartino are both involved in the production, which should be a good sign. In addition, Lauren Montgomery, who also worked on the original series, was convinced to direct the first movie. We are eager to see how the responsible parties will bring the movies to life and look forward to further details. By the way, Netflix is also currently producing the live-action series Avatar The Last Airbender, which is likely to be released by the streaming service at the end of this year or early next year. The Maze Runner director Wes Ball has been working on a new Planet of the Apes movie for several years. As Screen Rant reports, Disney is said to have not only one movie, but an entire trilogy in mind for the franchise. In 2011, Rupert Wyatt in his film Rise of the Planet of the Apes laid the groundwork for a trilogy, which Matt Reeves continued with two sequels in 2014 and 2017. The three movies were critically acclaimed, with the visual effects and lead actor Andy Serkis particularly standing out. It is now being said that West Ball's new trilogy will more or less immediately tie in with the three films. The script for the first movie is already nearing completion. According to Deadline, Ball has even backed out of the comic adaptation Harbinger for the production of Planet of the Apes. Those behind the project are still keeping quiet about both the content and a release date. However, we are very confident that we'll soon be able to share more official news. Orcs are an integral part of The Lord of the Rings. The mostly vicious, ugly creatures have become a classic of the fantasy genre, much like the elves. All the more surprising, then, that Amazon has not yet published any proper footage of the orcs for its upcoming The Lord of the Rings series. But as IGN exclusively presented on their site, Amazon now shared six images of the belligerent creatures. One big difference to Peter Jackson's movie trilogy is noticeable right away. The orcs shown here are clearly more savage in appearance and less organized. This also seems logical since the series is set in the Second Age and thus well before the events of the movies, where the orcs proceed in a much more coordinated manner under the leadership of Sauron and Saruman. Still uncertain is whether we will finally learn more about the origins of the orcs in the upcoming series. After all, this is still a big mystery. We are looking forward to further news about The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, and we cannot wait for the streaming premiere on Amazon Prime Video on September 2nd, 2022. A few weeks ago, we were presented with the first image of the upcoming Barbie film adaptation. It showed Margot Robbie in the titular lead role, and it has to be admitted that this is exactly the kind of pink and fancy live-action portrayal of the toy doll we had hoped for. Now a picture of Barbie's admirer, Ken, who was played by Ryan Gosling, came next. 
The 41-year-old shows himself with a well-toned upper body, a denim vest, Ken underwear, and peroxide blonde hair. He thus comes pretty close to his original as well. However, the film is about much more than the plump serving of cliches, despite the fact that the two published images suggest otherwise. After all, it should not be forgotten that Greta Gerwig is a director who has so far emphasized strong women beyond the classic gender roles in her films. Examples of this include Lady Bird and Little Women, which were both nominated for several Oscars. There is still little information about the plot, but we do know the movie revolves around a large toy company, which to all appearances is modeled on the Barbie manufacturer Mattel. In addition, many actors praise the excellent script, which was written by director Gerwig and her husband Noah Baumbach. In general, the movie has a pretty impressive cast. Among them, besides the two main actors Robbie and Gosling, there are Will Ferrell as a potential CEO of the toy company, Michael Cera, America Ferreira, Kingsley ben -Adir, Issa Rae, Kate McKinnon, and many others. Barbie will be released on the big screen in nearly a year, on July 21st, 2023. In the past, several spin-offs to the popular HBO series Game of Thrones got an announcement, including the upcoming series House of the Dragon and other spin-offs like The Sea Snake and 10,000 Ships. As we have learned in recent days, there are already plans for another spin-off production, which will immediately follow the events of the Game of Thrones main series. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the focus will be on none other than Jon Snow. It is also reportedly clear that Kit Harington will once again play the world-famous role. Although not all Game of Thrones fans reacted to the news with great enthusiasm, the series will seamlessly continue the storyline of the former fan favorite. Many do see Jon Snow as a likable character. Compared to some other Game of Thrones candidates, however, his character is essentially quite one-dimensional. The series will likely pick up directly after the events in King's Landing and show how Jon Snow is sent back to the North. Further details about the series, as well as a release date, are not available at the moment, but we will keep you posted. What are your thoughts on the planned series about Jon Snow? And do you expect the series to convince fans? Feel free to tell us in the comments. Slowly but surely, Denis Villeneuve's sequel to Dune is getting underway. While last month we were already able to report on the signing of Christopher Walken as the infamous Emperor Shaddam IV, another top-notch cast member has now been announced. We are talking about 36-year-old Leia Sedu, who played the role of Madeline Swan in James Bond No Time to Die. According to Deadline, she has already been chosen for the role of Lady Margot in the upcoming Dune 2. In the novel by Frank Herbert, she forms part of the Bene Gesserit and is considered an ally of the ruling Atreides family. She is also closely connected to the story of Fade Rautha, a nephew of the evildoer Baron Harkonnen. Filming of Dune 2 is due to start this fall, so as not to cause any delays to the theatrical release date of October 20th, 2023. That were the latest news of the week. In case you're looking for more content, you should not miss our new original on the Transformers franchise. There you will learn about the origins of Transformers, while getting a great recap of the whole movie series as well. This will hopefully evoke some nostalgia in you and make you look forward to the seventh installment called Rise of the Beasts, set for release next year. Have fun watching!